Let's now go out to New York here and listen uh, to the FBI as well as the United States Attorney for the S Southern District of New York talking about one of the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives, uh, this woman allegedly uh, defrauding investors of more than $4 billion through the OneCoin cryptocurrency company. Our hope is that naming her to the top 10 most wanted fugitive list will draw attention to her and her alleged crimes and allow us to bring her to justice here in the United States. As many of you know, the top 10 list has been an important tool for us. It's an important way to reach out to the public and has been successful in the past and we're hoping we will see that again now. We know she has ties to Bulgaria, Germany, Russia, Greece, and may have even traveled to other Eastern European countries and the United Arab Emirates. So starting today, we're offering a $100,000 reward for information that leads to her arrest. We ask that anyone who has information about Ignatova's whereabouts to call us at 1-800-CALL-FBI or use our TIPS page at www.tips.fbi.gov. We unfortunately know there are more people out there as well who are victims, other investors who were impacted by Ignatova and her company, OneCoin. We're asking for anyone who believes they may be a victim or have information in relation to victims to please reach out to us as well. With a fraud that large, we know there are more people who are impacted, so we're asking for help to identify them. We've created a landing page for the public and media to see video clips of Ignatova with links to documents that have already been made public in this case. That link is www.fbi slash ruja, R-U-J-A. This is a very complex investigation as anything involving cryptocurrency usually is. And it takes a tremendous team to pursue something and to pursue it for this long. In that course, I definitely want to thank the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District and his team, Damien Williams, Complex Fraud and Cyber Crime Unit Chief Christopher DeMaze and Deputy Chief Sagar Ravi, as well as AUSA's Nicholas Folly, Juliana Murray, and Michael McGinnis. I also want to call out the tremendous assistance that's been provided to us by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and ADA Juliet Lozano, as well as IRS Criminal Investigations New York, Newark Field Office, Acting Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Lani Espinal. And lastly, I want to call out the team of FBI folks who've worked so hard on this case for many years. I want to thank FBI Special Agents Ron Shimiko and Matthew Mahaffey for their hard work on this investigation. And I know there are many others in my office who've contributed to this complex case over time. So at this time, I'm going to hand it over to Damien Williams for additional comments. Thanks so much, Mike. So good morning. My name is Damien Williams, and I'm the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York. And today, we are announcing and happy to announce that Ruja Ignatova, an international fugitive who allegedly masterminded a vast worldwide fraud scheme, is being added to the FBI's top 10 most wanted list. Ignatova is a German citizen who lived in Bulgaria and had a sterling resume. She reportedly studied law at Oxford and worked as a consultant at McKinsey. But now she sits side by side on the top 10 list with cartel leaders, kidnappers, and murderers. That's no accident. As we've alleged, Ignatova founded and ran one of the largest Ponzi schemes in history peddling a fake cryptocurrency called OneCoin and raking in billions of dollars from her victims. OneCoin was based in Bulgaria, but it operated all over the world, including here in the United States. And according to OneCoin's promotional materials, over three million victims invested. Ignatova filled auditoriums across the globe, even Wembley Arena in London urging investors to join the financial revolution and to be one of the first adopters. She appealed to people's humanity, promising that OneCoin would transform the lives of unbanked people. And she timed her scheme perfectly, capitalizing on the frenzied speculation in the early days of cryptocurrency. She liked to call OneCoin the Bitcoin killer. But as alleged, it was all a massive fraud. 
Ignatova claimed that one coin had a legitimate blockchain, the core of any cryptocurrency. It didn't. Investors were told that one coin's value was set by market supply and demand. It wasn't. Victims thought their investments were growing. They weren't. And in fact, one coins were entirely worthless. Ignatova's lies were designed with one goal, to get everyday people all over the world to part with their hard-earned money, real money. Now, Ignatova was always worried about law enforcement and did the best she could to avoid detection. She demanded the use of encrypted phones, and she paid for confidential information about criminal investigations into OneCoin. In 2017, she grew suspicious of her American boyfriend, so she had his U.S. apartment bugged by corporate spies. When the secret recordings revealed that he was cooperating with the FBI, she disappeared into thin air. She immediately boarded a flight from Bulgaria to Greece with a security guard. Not one piece of luggage. The security guard came back, but Ignatova didn't. She hasn't been seen or heard from since. Turns out that Ignatova predicted all of this in 2014 when she was just starting OneCoin. Back then, as she wrote an email that was entitled Exit Strategy, she listed a number of options for how to get away with it. The very first one, take the money and run. And that's exactly what she did, to the tune of billions of dollars. I want to thank our amazing law enforcement partners at the FBI and the IRS, whose work made this case possible. And I also want to thank the career prosecutors in my office who were handling the case. Nicholas Folley, Michael McGinnis, Juliana Murray, and Julieta Lozano, and their supervisors, Christopher DeMacy and Sagar Ravi, the chiefs of the Complex Frauds and Cybercrime Unit. And I want to make clear, make sure everyone is clear on this. Today's announcement is a pledge to redouble our efforts to capture Ignatova, to seek justice for her victims, and to hold her accountable for her crimes. Her fraud reached all over the globe, in every corner of the globe and the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York and our partners at the FBI and the IRS are going to do the same to bring her to justice. Thank you. So uh, one quick word about the top 10 list. It only works, uh, and it works very well, as we've seen over time, because uh, of the support we get from the media. So I want to thank everybody for participating in this. and. Uh, Thank you for getting that message out to the public. So with that, we'll take a few questions. Assistant Director, why now? And do you have any leads of where she might be in the world that you could share? So I won't discuss any specific leads because obviously it's an active investigation. Uh, but why now is because it's an important tool for us, the top 10 list. And we approach this list in determining who do we view as this particular threat or concern, and who do we view as somebody where the public can help. And that's really what we're talking about here, is we think the public is in the best position to provide additional information about her whereabouts, her activities, and additional victims. Is there any indication that the scheme is ongoing? Again, it's an ongoing investigation, so I don't want to get into too much of that. Uh, we've released a lot of documents already about other indictments and charges in this case, so I'd invite you to take a look at those. Those will be made available on the site I mentioned earlier. And there are other victims out there we desperately want to hear from. Yes? Is there any information about whether she looks the same and, and or whether she's traveling under any kind of assumed names or anything like that? So there are rumors about a, a variety of things involving her, but they are just that. They're rumors. So I'm not going to feed those or comment on those. What I will say is that uh, Damien laid out pretty well her final steps before she fled. And I would say that uh, what we know is that she's got a lot of money, and we know that she hit the road pretty quick. Beyond that, everything else is rumor, so we're willing to take any information the public is willing to share. Sure. Sure. Um, um, many people have been saying that she's dead, including Frank Schneider, who I think is trying, they're trying to extradite here as part of the, the Mark Scott case. Is this, is this listening, does this indicate that somehow you have, you've received information different than you had, or can you speak to that? And also, if you're willing to, Schneider, I know, is fighting extradition. Is, is the... Uh, Southern District getting closer to actually bringing them to the United States. I'll let Damien respond to the questions on extradition. But again, there are a lot of rumors that exist uh, about her activities. Um, we're obviously coming out to the public today because we believe they can be of assistance. 
This will be a short answer. I, I'm not going to be able to comment on the status of an extradition you know, process. Um, today is all about uh, Ruja Ignatova. I want to make sure that the, the public is focused on that. Can you talk about the money? Uh, how much did she actually get away with? And what authority do you believe? And how much do you think she has? And how is somebody able to hide that kind of money from being frozen and her right. accounts? And so forth? Right. We're not getting into particulars on that. She left with a tremendous amount of cash, tremendous amount of money involved in this case. Uh, and how does somebody hide a lot of money like that? We've seen criminals across the world able to move money if you're well connected. Uh, it can definitely be done. I would assume that over the last couple of years, our efforts have been successful in adding pressure, but money can buy a lot of friends. So I imagine she's taking advantage of that situation. Wait, what's, what's the concern that she could be in Russia, a place where it's impossible by the Russian Constitution to be uh, it does raise some concerns if she finds her way to a country where extradition is difficult for us. But we know she's traveled throughout uh, a number of countries in Eastern Europe uh, and perhaps in the Middle East. We're going to make every effort we can, and we're not going to stop looking for her. That's what it comes down to. Eventually, I'm confident, we'll find her. I have a question for Mr. Williams. Your, your criminal prosecution, did that shut down the ongoing fraud? Did it put a dent in the whole enterprise of one point? Well, our prosecution definitely had an impact. Um, I think what we have made clear, though, is that the investigation is ongoing. Um, we have definitely charged a number of people, and I think the, the prosecution has been a success. But the reason that we're here today is because there's more to be done. And we're going to stay focused on making sure that we can, you know, eventually get handcuffs on, uh, on Ignatova, um, who, of course, is the mastermind of a lot of this. So. That's why we're here today, and um, as much success as we've had in the past, we want to make sure we have more in the future. Do you believe she orchestrated the scam all on her own, or are there others out there? Uh, as you'll see in some of the previous indictments and documents that have been made available today, there were definitely other people involved. There's been others charged in connection with her uh, scheme. But quite clearly, as you can see from some of the videos that are being made available, she led the way. Great. Okay. Thank Excellent. Thank Thanks, folks. Appreciate your time today.